Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Dandy Guide to Titanfall, brought to you by Dandy Echo. And today's episode is going to be all about Boneyard. We're going a little bit out of order, for reasons I'll explain later on. And now I'm going to tell you exactly what we're going to go over. We're going to go over where the spawns are, where the hard points are, location of the evacs, and some strategies I've come up with to help you be your best on this map. So these are the locations of all of the spawns and all of the evac points. The map spawns are the same for hardpoint and LTS and attrition. All three of those are exactly the same. And also there are four evac points, so that's pretty standard. And they're all randomized depending on, uh, actually not depending on anything, it's just random for every single game mode. You never know where you're going to evacuate to. And so these are the hard points. Now the hard points um, are all indoors. You're never going to find one that's outside. So be prepared for some very, very close quarters combat to get on those hard points. It's going to be very chaotic. Don't let the outside fool you. Don't even bother fighting outside because there's not going to be anything going on. Now before we can get into any gameplay, I want to make one thing very, very clear. Okay, play very close attention. Boneyard is not a sniping map. I see this all the time. People think that just because it's really big, that's basically that's the only reason, and because there's some really high points, that it's a sniping map. This is not the case. Which makes it perfect for people like me who don't snipe and can just pick these guys off, sneak up behind them, break their necks, and everything is very, very dandy. Oh, and one more thing. I have a bonus clip for uh, you guys at the end. I have something that's really, really great about this map so far. I've only found it on this map, and I, re I really want to show it to you because I think you guys will really, really enjoy it for those of you who stick around towards the end. That's, this is after all of the explanation and the strategies and the maps and stuff, so stick around for that and you'll get some, re some really, really good hot coffee. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to teach you is how you should move around this map. Now, this is very important what you're seeing right here, and that's that I'm not going left. A lot of people take that main zip line that goes down that corridor there near the turret. That's a very bad idea because, well, everyone does it, and everyone's expecting you to do it. So they're just going to wait at the end of the zip line and shoot you off probably before you even get there. So my advice to you is don't do that. Go If you're IMC, go right, and if you're militia, go left through that tower. But on, since I was on the IMC spy side, I took that zip line down into the bottom side of the buildings. And what that allowed me to do was I got underground, I was nice and safe, nobody knew I was there. But since I have active radar, which is what you're seeing now, I can see through all of the walls, I can see out, and I, c I can see if there's any pilots coming my way, or there's any grunts, or just, I can just farm. So it's a very safe place to go, very low risk. There's not a very high probability that anyone is going to be there, and if you're on the IMC, chances are you're going to get there first. One other very important thing you should know about this map and how to move around is the zip lines. They are very, very important. Since most of the action in this map happens underground, those zip lines go to all the buildings, and you can use them to get to anywhere in particular. It's especially useful on hardpoint if you need to get between the points, because they're rather spaced out. And you can use those to get pretty much anywhere you want and get the drop on people because most of the time people aren't expecting you to move around that fast. You can see what I'm doing. I just move from one building to another, destroy everything, clear it out, and then move on to the next one. Usually I take a zip line if that's, if that's an option or take a Titan, which is probably the safest option because on the zip lines people can still shoot you off. But towards the, uh, as the game goes on, people don't really expect to see you on those so much. So it's to your benefit to use the zip lines as often as possible. And that's the important feature about this game, is that all of the action takes place underground, pretty much. Um, the uh, wide open areas that you're seeing aren't really important, and that's what throws a lot of people off. That's why a lot of them pop up with sniper classes, is because they think they can get on top of that uh, the dog whistle tower and snipe down on people that are out there. The problem is, there's never been anybody out there. Especially on hardpoint, everyone's inside battling out in close quarters. Or they're inside Titan, in which case there's nothing you can do to them as a sniper. And I think here is the only death that I have. As aside from this, I'm going to go flawless. And so that's what people, uh, that's a lot of mistake a lot of people make, is they th see that big open area, they see that the map is huge, and they assume sniper. That's not the case. I'm going to recommend a class to you that is not sniper, although you can do some long-range combat. It is possible, and it does happen, which is why I'm going to recommend an assault rifle. But... It's not the crux of this map. Close quarters combat is probably what you're going to be faced with the most often. Speaking of classes, I do have a recommended class for you, and it is uh, close to what I'm using here, although I'm going to recommend two to you, actually, because this map can go one of either two ways. You can either do a hybrid between the long range and the short range combat, or you can go especially for short range combat. For the hybrid combat, I'm going to recommend to you the R101HC, of course, it's because it's such a versatile gun. 
You can slap any attachment on it you want, really. I recommend the suppressor, just because you are moving around so much, you don't want people to know where you are just for an instant, because that's very, very bad for your health if they can know where you are and shoot at you. I recommend the suppressor, and something like, and either the hollow sight or the HCOG sight. They're both relatively low-level zoom, and they have relatively clear reticles. So you can uh, get clear target acquisition in quarters and at long range. I wouldn't recommend the AOG just because, as, ma as I mentioned in the previous episode, it has a very light reticle and in the desert it's going to get kind of washed out. But also because it's a high enough zoom that it won't be that useful in close quarters and you're going to struggle to use it and be effective with it. So I don't recommend the AOG. For your kits and other things, I would recommend that you use uh, probably the uh, R40 RE45 as your sidearm because of the close range. There's a high likely high likelihood that you're going to run out of ammo with the 101C because you don't have extended mags and you're going to need to switch to something and just spam bullets at the person. The P2011 is not going to be your friend. The wingman certainly isn't unless you're just a god with a mouse or, an, or a stick and you can actually do that in close quarters when everything is really hectic and you can't keep track of what's going on. I recommend quick reload of course because I can't live without that and the hacker knife because of these turrets they're not uh, game defining, but they can take down your titan if you're not careful. If your shields are low, or if you're fighting another titan, they can take you out. So it's very helpful to hack those if you have the hacker knife, which I recommend. If not, the mini detector is always a good one to go with. The second class we're going to recommend to you is a close quarters map. It's going to be the car. Uh, you can use either the iron sights or the hcog. Doesn't matter. But you're going to want to use the counterweight because since you're in close, going to be close quarters. You're going to hit fire a lot, and really you shouldn't ever run the car without the counterweight. Although you can do the suppressor. I've done that, and it's worked. Below, since this is very close quarters, the counterweight is going to be your preferred attachment. Because what you're going to do is on this map, you're going to force the close quarters combat. You're going to run around. Uh, get into the buildings as fast as you can. Don't spend a lot of time outside because the car is going to suffer out there. And take advantage of the ridiculously good hit fire you have with the car and you'll be able to shred people and you may even go flawless if you do this. Yeah, I recommend the same things. I don't recommend run and gun for this because it really actually just decreases your hit fire accuracy and it's not good for you. So quick reload with that as well. And also the hacker knife because of the turrets and whatnot. If that's not uh, the only difference from this class and the other one is really the R101 and the uh, the and the car. Those are the only difference. Now, I'm going to warn you, what you were about to see was not intentional. I did not mean for this to happen. It was completely by accident, and it's also part of the bonus clip that I was going to tell you about, so you all have to promise me, once you see this, you're not going to report me for hacking or modding, because that was not the case. I'm going to show you exactly what I did and how this works. This is a complete accident. I was able to replicate it, and I'm going to show you how to do that in the bonus clip. But for now, feel free to freak out. And now that your mind is completely off of everything I just said, probably freaking out of what you just saw, you probably set your brains on fire after what just happened, I'm going to explain exactly what just happened in a few minutes, but for now I'm going to recap everything I went over in the video. So, use the one I want to see the car, because there's very little long range, you can force it, and there's also lots of lots of quartz quarters, so this is not a sniping map. Use either SMGs or the 101C. Stick the inside so you can force those situations and don't get caught outside. Use active radar so you can check the inside for anyone. And uh, yeah, zip lines are your friend. For Titan loadouts, it doesn't really matter. Um, you just use something like the 40 millimeter or the uh, pl or that plasma rocket. What am I thinking? I can't say words or the quad rockets so that you can poop on infantry a heck of a lot easier. And now that you all have sat through that, I'm going to show you the bonus clip I promised you, which is how to make your Titan fly. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to get to Boneyard, call in your Titans. I did this in a private match just to try and replicate it. And what you're going to do is you're going to have uh, you're going to need a friend to do this, and I'll explain why, but you can see where I was and I was meleeing before. It's not working. I'm All I'm doing is just sitting there. I thought that it was just that area, but after a couple seconds, I realized what was going on, and I had my friend do this. So what you're going to do is you're going to direct your buddy to stand right next to that, what I'm assuming is an AC unit, and you're going to melee him, or try to melee him. And as soon as you do that, your Titan is going to fly forward. Now the reason this happens is because uh, you're not actually close enough to do the melee, and your Titan melee has an auto lock, kind of like the pilot one does. 
but since your Titan is a lot bigger than a pilot, he's going to fly forward with a lot of momentum. And you'll see there's a little bitty dirt ramp right in front of that building. And since the Titan obviously can't dash on top of the building, all of your momentum from that dash is directed straight up. And your result is your Titan just flies a couple hundred feet into the air, and it looks absolutely hysterical. And you're going to see it from my point of view, and that's what, that's what it looks like from the ground. And it's... <laughs> I really want to see someone else do this in a public match, because for me, it was absolutely hysterical. And I love doing it. I'm <laughs> I wonder if anyone actually thought I was hacking in that game. Oh god, I did go 13 and 1, or something like that. I mean, maybe like a 14 or 15 and 1. Same way I thought I was hacking anyway. But I'm not. Please don't report me. This is a complete accident. I did not mean for this glitch to happen. It's just really, really funny. Well, again, I thank you all very much for watching, and stay tuned for my next episode, which is going to be on Angel City. We're going to get back in alphabetical order. I just really, really had to show you guys this glitch, because I thought it was absolutely hysterical funny. But I bid you all a good evening, and until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. This is Echo. Goodbye.